There's something wrong with the machine. That's going to kill me. I don't know. It's skipping stitches and it's making me crazy. Ow! Help! What? 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 The machine isn't working. Like what? What's that mean? What skipping do you mean it's not... stitches. It's stupid machine. It's stupid machine. So it's skipping stitches. So did you do the first thing? What was the first thing you did? I put in a new needle. Good. Okay. And which direction is the long groove? To On that. the left. Is it in there correctly? Yes. Did, did you double check? Yeah, double check. Look at the needle. Make sure that the, it's the long groove is on the left. Is it on the left? Looks like it. And is this the scarf on the right? Yeah. Okay, so that's correct. And you change the thread. You re rethread the machine. I from, did. From yes, I I rethreaded that stupid machine. Don't call it a stupid machine. Stupid it's, machine. It's not the machine's fault. Okay, so let's make sure that that's clear. Okay. Did you change the bobbin too? Yes. Okay, did you do it while watching the video that is on our YouTube channel step by step? Uh-huh. You did that? Okay, good. Okay, so now, but the machine's still skipping, right? Yes. Okay, so um, what were you sewing up until it changed? I was sewing Stingray onto leather. What kind leather. Of, what kind of leather? Heavy leather, thin leather, thick leather? The stuff we use on our guitar straps? Yes. Okay, so a composite leather with with three layers of material with glue and stingray, right? That's it. Okay, so do you do you feel like the material has a uniform density? Or is it soft in some spots, hard in others? Soft and hard. Okay, so it's just it's like just a, a person. It's, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's got it's got inconsistent density. Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm okay. saying. Okay, so this machine is typically tuned up for that, right? Yes. Okay, and the you tested and it's continuing to do the same same thing wrong. What size thread? Is it the same 346 with the 25 needle that we knew, you normally use? Yes. So you didn't change anything like that? I didn't change. Beep. Oh. You're not supposed to curse on YouTube. That's why I beeped it. Okay, good girl. So now. We're going to do a quick inspection of the, the timing. Did you break a needle or anything? No. Okay, so but let's inspect the timing real quick, right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the thread from the needle all the way up past the take-up lever. Okay, so the, we're going to just pull the thread out all the way past this device here. Okay, I'm just going to dangle it out of the way. Now, what I'm going to do is cycle the machine so the needle goes all the way up to the top of the stroke. Okay, now it's at the top of the stroke. And look up here, look where my finger's pointing. Can you see the top of the needle holder and that silver section? Okay, that means that the needle bar is in its, probably in its proper position. Okay, so now we're gonna double check the needle and the deflector relationship. So here we go. Real quick battlefield inspection, we're going to remove the cover and we're going to cycle the needle all the way to the bottom of the stroke. And when it's at the bottom, we're going to look right here and we're going to see the deflector and the eye of the needle. Take it and catch it all in your hand at the same time. Okay, so once that's out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect for burrs real quick by very simply running my finger from back to front and feel if there's any vibration from the burr on my fingerprint. And this hook is perfect, so it, it doesn't, but since it is old, it's starting to look like the point is. After inspecting it, the hook 
doesn't have any burrs, but since it is old, the tip is looking a little shorter than, you know, it was, because it was probably a good, you know, 16th of an inch longer than this when it was new. So we're going to just put that to the side, knowing that there's no burr, okay? Now, the inspection is going to require a couple more things to be removed, so we're going to remove the uh, feed dog. Can you see inside here? Can you see that screw, or should I put a little light? Okay, so this is the feed dog retention screw. We're going to remove that. It's usually pretty darn tight. Okay, and we'll see once we get that loose. Reach in there and undo it by hand. Remove the screw and the dog itself. Okay, so there are the two parts. They go in the drawer or in their little pan. Okay, the next thing, take the throat plate off. You could could take the throat plate off first. Screw in the little pan. The long screwdriver really helps a lot in this situation. A lot of folks tend to use right angle screwdrivers. I don't like them because you can't spin them. They're just little quarter turn things. Okay, now we've got the entire throat of the machine exposed. And do we see any thread or any, any unwanted material besides lint and oil? You know, that's pretty gross and dirty in there. Kind of probably should wipe it down, but... So now I'm going to cycle the machine so that the deflector, again, I'm going to double check so that the needle is all the way at the bottom and now the deflector needle relationship inspection can be double checked. But we see that the bottom of the eye is level with the bottom of the deflector. If the eye of that needle was lower, and I'm going to fake it just for the sake of conversation, if the eye of that needle was below the deflector like this, this machine is clearly out of time, okay? So we want the bottom of the eye level with the deflector all the way up in the holder and level with the deflector. So this condition is good, and we know that the needle bar is basically in time. Okay, so now on to the hook needle timing inspection. Can you say that three times real fast? Hook needle timing inspection. So we're going to reassemble the bobbin compartment. Okay. I'm going to set the shuttle on top of the deflector, so we're going to cycle the machine until the deflector is leveled out like this, so it looks like a U. And then we're going to set the hook on top of it, and because there's thread in it, I've got to guide the thread through the middle of the retention ring and slide it on in place. Okay. Now the ring should be able to rotate smoothly around until the screw holes line up. Put the first screw in. Don't let go at this point because all of it could fall onto the floor and damage the hook. You're supposed to say, okay. Okay. <laughs> Silly word. Okay. Remember the little springs. Don't drop them on the floor because then that requires us crawling around on our hands and knees like a couple of dummies. Okay. And then tighten them back up. These screws, because of the nature of the springs, they don't have to be super tight. Just, just until they stop turning. And that's kind of it. You don't have to crank them down. Okay, so there's that one. Here's the second one. No cranking, huh? No cranking. Seriously. Sorry, right, sorry. Okay, so now we're going to do the... Let's remove the, the bobbin anyway. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to set the stitch length at zero stitch length, okay? So there's the lever in zero, right? We're going to cycle the needle all the way to the bottom of the stroke, okay? Always going in the forward direction. Look at my hand over here. Never going backwards. Always the top of the hand wheel going forward, okay? To the bottom of the needle stroke, so the bottom dead center, okay? So there's the needle at the bottom dead center, and we have to memorize one thing. Okay, look at me. The timing moment on the Cobra Class 4 sewing machine is 3 16ths past bottom dead center. 
Okay, so definition of bottom dead center, the needle comes all the way down, goes to the bottom of the stroke, and is at the moment right before it starts coming up, that would be the bottom dead center. And since the hand wheel is only going the one direction, the needle is going to go down and then start rising up. As the hand wheel is continuing in the forward direction, past the bottom dead center is the needle's at the bottom and starts to rise on its own, and 3 16 past bottom dead center. So the timing moment for the Cobra Class 4 sewing machine is 3 16 of an inch past bottom dead center. And we're going to measure with a very simple way to do that. Basically, we're going to take our little clear ruler and we're going to set it on the frame of the machine just like this. Okay? If it's a small ruler, it's great because it just can sit there. Okay? And what I do is I take the lamp from the machine and I put it kind of behind, as close to behind the ruler as possible so that I can see through it. Look this way. Okay, you got to get right up in there so you can see the hardware behind it. Now you can see the needle set screw on my machine right here. Okay, and you can see the opening of the screwdriver port. The screwdriver slot is right there. Okay, so or you can use the seam between the needle holder and the needle bar or the very bottom edge. Whichever landmark lines up exactly with the side of your ruler, then you have a fixed point that you can use to measure. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle the machine up 3 16 past the bottom dead center. So I'm using the slot on the side of my screw. So up we go. There's an eighth and then another half eighth is 3 16 Okay, now what I want to do is I want to see that the point of the hook is lined up in the center of the needle shaft. Can you see the point of the hook? See, there it is right there, and then there's the needle shaft. Can you see that? And the point of the hook lined up with the center of the needle shaft, and then technically it's supposed to be one-eighth of an inch above the top of the eye. And this one looks like it's a little shy of one eighth of an inch above the top of the eye. So we may have to do some fine point adjustments because I think this hook is a little worn out. I might have to advance the needle bar just a tiny bit, but that's for a different conversation. So the timing moment for the Cobra Class 8 or Class 4 zone machine is 3 16 past bottom dead center. When we do this, we're going to cycle the machine in zero stitch length until the needle bar goes to the very bottom and then we're going to use our clear ruler method cycle the machine up 3 16 and inspect because of the nature of this ruler and the lines and the weird little devices that we're using to measure we're going to induce a little bit of human error so I recommend doing the procedure three or four times to make sure that you see accurately that you have a consistent out of time situation before wrenching on your machine. So let's say you determine after a couple inspections that you need to adjust the hook timing. The way we do that is we come over here and we expose the adjustment screw behind this little window. So I typically just roll it up and then tighten the screw so that it kind of stays there. And what I'm going to do here to make my life easier is I'm going to open the side cover as well same way and I'm going to just light, lightly tighten the screw so that the caps stay up I'm going to take my trusty fa fancy flashlight and stick it in this opening now I can look inside the compartment and I can look right up in here and there's a big nine millimeter end wrench screw can you see in there that screw okay so I'm going to take my standard nine millimeter Allen wrench and put it in the hole. I need to be able to see. Okay, so now there it is. But see that little itty bitty teeny handle? There's no way I'm going to put enough pressure on there to turn that screw. So I'm going to use my fancy end wrench trick. So this is a common half inch box end wrench. And I'm going to use the end wrench trick like this. 
Hold on, I gotta get a little more room. To add additional leverage so that I can turn the screw. So basically, I loosen the screw, then I can come over here and manipulate with my fingers the position of the hook, tighten it back up, repeat my inspection, and make sure that I've got my hook and needle timed up, and then reassemble the machine in the reverse order that we did, taking it apart, and hopefully your machine is sewing properly again. This is Albane, Albane for Leather, and Pam helping out on the camera pretending to be actors and faking it so that we could bring you a little more information about your machine. So, um, we are, it is December, right? What What's the holiday? Festivus. Festivus. Festivus for the rest of us. We've got a thread tree for, for our decorations, but we hope that you, your family, and all your loved ones have a wonderful holiday. Um, be nice to each other, and the only thing we ever ask is that you Please pay it forward.